I know E. I need to. Oh, I'm recording. Okay. Okay, okay. Do I have a classic or do I have a classic? I, I feel like that's my best way of hyping this movie up. <laughs> so today I'm going to. Uh, this video is going to be about The Godfather, 1972. So. This one, I, I feel like. I almost feel like I should tread, I almost feel like I should uh, tread lightly when it comes to this, this particular film because not only is it uh, a decent film, or above decent, I'll say, it's, it's, it's a good film. Not only is it a good film, but there is so much theatrical history involved in this film let alone the actors that played in this film, actors and actresses, excuse me. But I, I can't sit here and, and like, put it on a pedestal because that would be doing it an injustice. It's, it's The Godfather. It's probably one of, I don't even know. I, I, I've been doing several movies and they all have been, um, like cult classics, so it's it's hard to go in any other direction. To be honest with you, I mean the amount of parodies and in everyday life you hear quotes from this movie. I mean, this movie is is a part of American culture at this point. I feel like so. I'm gonna do my best to uh <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna present this movie only the way i can so i'm gonna start off with getting some of the characters in there that's my dog see see now she wants to get through this door but when i open the door guess what she's gonna sit there and look at it she, she's scratching i want to get in i want to get in. she's she's letting me know she's signaling to me that she wants to get to, in there right now watch when i open the door i'm gonna open the door and i bet you I bet you she's not even going to go in there. Open the door. What did she do? Oh, she went in there. I guess I was wrong. You can't win them all. I mean, she's been scratching it all day. Hasn't really been going in there. I guess, uh, like I said, I guess she can't win them all. Um, anyway, so. Wow. That's the thing. I'm, I'm, I was, I know I was trying to figure out how I was going to word this before I even started this video because I didn't want to get um, awestruck, if you will. I didn't want to be like, just sit here and just be like, uh, Al Pacino, Marlon Brando, uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, uh, 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 The Godfather. But, okay. So, it follows... It follows the main character. I, I guess the main character would be Al Pacino. Al Pacino is the youngest son of Marlon Brando, who's basically one of the a head of one of the mom families in uh, New York. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, and uh, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just going to stick with. Uh, oh, and basically, it, it follows. It, it, the movie starts as Al Pacino comes back from war, and this takes place in the 40s. Uh, Al Pacino, best I could tell, he, he was a Marine. Uh, so that means he fought in the Pacific, the Pacific Theater, like in the islands against the Japanese. And I just want to uh, say something. If he was, if his character was a Marine, which I, I, think, I, I strongly believe he was a Marine because later in the movie... His little son is wearing uh, the Marines dress blue. And it gave him a really high rank. It would look, would it look like it was a really high rank. But anyway. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, God. It's the, I, always, I always try and talk about the. I always end up talking about the, the end of the movie first. Because the last thing I saw. I'm going to try and keep this one a little bit more linear. So. It, follow, it starts with him coming back from. Uh, war, he's basically a hero, but 
they say he's a hero, but I don't see any uh, medals or or anything on his uniform. I just see some stuff saying he fought in a couple of campaigns. But of course, I'm not a war historian, so I can't be like, oh, well, that 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 outfit's incorrect and this, that, and the third. I, it just looked. It didn't look like he had a whole bunch of medals on his chest for him to be considered a, a war hero. He went to war. I'll say that, but during that time. A lot of individuals went to war, women included. But anyway, so um starts off with him, and it's, I think it's a, a wedding for his daughter. Um, I might, uh, so, then I'm starting to touch on Marlon Brando. Now, I think I went back and watched some of Marlon Brando's earliest works, uh, on the waterfront, and well, actually, that's the only thing I saw that was from his beginning. On the waterfront, and I saw him in um, Apocalypse Now, and and I've heard, I've seen like stories about his uh, actual life and things like that. But I'm, I won't get into that. So, starts off at a wedding, very beautiful setting. Um, people are asking favors and showing love towards him. Well, Marlon Brown, of course, because he's he's a, he's a don, and then. As it progresses, um, things seem to be a little rocky, but uh, he, he's playing it cool. Um, now, this also, I feel like this also touches on real events and folds it into uh, fictional settings and, and things of that nature to make it more entertaining. Uh, I let my dog back in. She's growling. Come here. Come on. Let's go. Back in there. There we go. She wanted to get in there, but she wants to protect. Nothing to protect. Somebody going to come get me, let them come get me. No, I thank you. Thank you for protecting me. Huh? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Talk to my dog. So, um, where's that? This video is all over the place. So, it's a beautiful wedding. Oh, I see. I, I, I feel like things were a little... Oh, okay. So where I was getting at with that is, <clears throat> I know, I know from like a few books that I've come across and whatnot, they speak on uh, the interjection of drugs into the mob in the early days. There were older individuals who were uh, not necessarily. Uh, they didn't welcome that type of stuff with open arms into their organization. Okay, this is a, a true fact. So this is touching on that and the infighting that it created within all these families. So the, how how the Corleones get rolled up into this, um, Marlon Brando's character is probably one of the... Um, He's, he's one of the few people who who doesn't agree with uh, dealing in drugs, but everybody else is pretty much on board because of the amount of money they're they're gonna make. So their family basically is starting to be picked apart from the inside. Um, it's a hit on him. Things continue to go downhill. Uh, the youngest son, who was a war hero, and things. Oh, that's what I wanted to speak on too. So th there's an instance when. Assuming he's the second oldest son, he's made he makes a comment to uh uh Al Pacino's character, hey, this isn't the war, what do you think this is? You're not shooting somebody from a mile away, you gotta be close up. Oh, and another thing, he's like over the top, stereotypical I, I, Italian, I feel like. He's like bada bing, bada boom, he's doing all that stuff. And the hand movements and all that. He's doing all that. <laughs> um But what I thought was funny about that that statement he made was if he was a Marine, that's all he saw was close close quarters combat because the Marines went through hell on those islands fighting those Japanese. They I mean, they were entrenched for real. They had tunnel systems and all type of stuff. But again, I'm not a war historian. Um, uh, so he decided, well, they want to meet with him. The other parties involved want to meet with him. They kill... They wind up killing probably one of, <clears throat> like, 
the Godfather's second hand man who will do like who do anything for him. He wound up killing him, but and taking a hit on him. But he almost they almost kill him, but he does. He survives. He try to kill him again, and the police chief out of all things, the police chief gets involved in it because he's getting paid off by another family, and um, he punches uh, Al Pacino's character and breaks his jaw and things like that. Uh, I want to comment on that too. I really love those. Those oh man, I want to comment on um um the way uh Marlon Brando when he gets shot the way he like like kind of like faints or passes out it's it's textbook old Hollywood I mean he falls on every part of the car then rolls on the ground and then his body's stiff and then he collapses which I thought was just it's hilarious to watch because nobody dies like nobody like almost dies like that or gets injured like that it's so overly dramatic it's just classic hollywood and and, and i want to add in to the um the uh, uh the fight sequence i mean there's nothing the choreographing it's just you, you hold your fist up and you <clears throat> and you punch and the guy's supposed to go with it it's 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 over the top it's, it's that's what makes it so hilarious in my opinion you know so um you have that okay so you, where where was I at? I got caught up in, I got caught up in the humor in there. So yeah, so Al Pacino goes. They decide, not that they decide, but they feel like he's neutral because, of course, um, if you watch, there's a, there's a theme within these crime movies. Um, I guess the end goal is always to go legitimate, and he, uh, uh, Marlon Brando's character felt like Al Pacino's character, his his baby son would, you know, I guess he got drafted, okay, fine, he would go do his time in the service, and when he came back, he would become a politician, or, or, or a lawyer, or something like that, he felt like it, he would have a better life, you know, something not involved in such grimy, dirty crime, which I think is understandable, I, I wasn't going to say commendable, but I don't, I don't think that word fits in what I was going after, but anyway, I know I'm rambling on, and on, so, uh, Al Pacino's character, uh, is chosen by other family to have a sit down and talk, and he's trying to talk to him, but he's not, he's like, hey man, I know I almost killed your father, and you know, you know, I killed, you know, old old buddy, you know, I did this and I did that, but you know, I, I want to be protected, which is, this, come on man, get out of here with that, and uh, Al Pacino does the deed, he gets the the police chief right there and the other guy, then they send him to Italy, so. The whole time he has, uh, he's had a, a love interest the whole time, and of course she's not of that lifestyle, so she's asking all these questions and she's scared of this and scared of that. And I'm like, in my head, I'm just I'm watching the movie, I'm like, man, she does not belong there. She needs to get out of there. But of course he has, you know, butterflies and he's in love and googly eyes and rose colored glasses and all, all the whole nine, you know, everything for. Her. Um. So. They're in Italy. I, I I tend to like that, uh, that little sequence when they're in Italy, cause it's easy living. You know, he's he's kind of laid back. He, he he put in work for his family. He's laid back, having a good time, for the most part. And then he he falls in love out there in Italy. That ends tragically, of course, with a car bomb, and it was quite the explosion. I I might add, Jesus, more than I was expecting for that time. That was like uber real explosives. I mean, that was like real stuff and. Later in the mo later on in the movie, uh, when his when he's finally uh, in charge, uh, I thought it was interesting. I, I wait. I wait till I get to that point. Um, so uh, they're doing a the thing. Oh, by this time, the oldest what is it? The second. I didn't get the order of the sons. So one of the older one of the two older sons is in charge right now, but he's a hothead and he's a womanizer. This, that, and third. He winds up getting set up and and taken out because he's hitting everybody. So he's he's whew, he's doing a little. He's living too fast, as they would say, as the older guys would tell young guys. You're living too fast. You're doing too much. So he winds up getting hurt or killed for that. And in, in a pretty decent, a pretty decent killing, I guess. Um, keep fast forwarding. I'm leaving out a lot because there's a lot to, to talk about in this movie. I mean, I'm a hundred percent sure. This film is probably taught in film school. Well, it's probably brought up in 
dissecting in film school. That's how good of a film it is. That's why uh, when I first started this video, I was trying to find the right words to describe it. I'm not saying it's the best film ever made. And I'm not saying it's even below that as subpar, but it's up there. It's one of the better American films ever created. Um, so you fast forward a little bit. Uh, okay, that's one son. He's gone. Now, what else do you have? Uh, all the while, I think the son who was with his father, Marlon Brando's character, when he was when the assassination attempt happened, they sent him to Vegas a long time ago. Um, I, I read a book about the mob's involvement in actually creating Vegas. But anyway, so you got that going on, right? Um, now one son's gone, and the father's pretty much just trying to recover. But once he gets this news, he he's like, "No, I'm, I'm, you know, he's bandaged up. He's still has bandages on his neck. You know, he's moping around the house basically, but." When that news hits him, he's like, psh, he, all business. He's back to it. He has he, he organizes a meeting with all these heads. He starts talking to him, things of that nature. And you, you really don't. I personally didn't care for the character who's basically causing all this grief towards his family just because of their belief that uh, drugs are bad. But he did have a point. I mean, there's so much this movie involves so much in, in real life and and in the fiction world in an entertainment from an entertainment basis is so good and it also touches on so many real points or, or real issues that have come up in society as far as um wanting to dump uh these very addictive substances in um areas of people who are rich in melanin I'll put it that way. Um, but uh, what what the character touches on is the fact that he would lose all these partnerships, if you will, in these more sacred places. But the reality is, if you are if, if you are under under the impression that somebody who's sworn an oath, such as a like uh, a, a, um, a police officer or or do, do congressmen swear? I don't know this world. Or somebody who's in a position such as that, like a congressman, a police officer, even a firefighter or whatever. I don't want to tarnish their name. But if you think they're, uh, if you think they're, if you think they're withdrawn from basic human emotions such as greed and envy and, 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 and desires like that, you're wrong. And I think he was that character was trying to touch on the fact that once you uh, bring drugs into the fold, it's going to allow a lot of these individuals in these positions of power, uh, their morals to be corrupted and it's going to backfire, which, you know, and from the real world aspect, we've seen time and time again, okay. So I'm getting off. I'm getting off subject here. So you want to scoop forward? This is a long, long video. Let me see here. But the movie, the, the version I saw was about three hours, though. So first one's out of there. Uh, I guess I just, uh, I guess I just jump forward to when he comes back from Italy after he loses his his. His uh, Italian wife. Um, his father's pretty much running things. I think I'm drawing a blank right there, though. Uh, they skip a lot of time in this movie, too. It's kind of hard to to stay with what decade they're in as far as... But I, I kind of can pick up by the firearms they're using and by the way their clothes are. Because men in the 60s wore skinnier ties. So I feel like it. They, they were touching on the '60s because I guess I just get to the part to the end of the movie basically. So his his father winds up dying in the garden with his son Al Pacino's characters. His his little son winds up dying in his garden with, with him, which was a touching moment. Um, oh, I'm I, I now I apologize if anybody's watching this 
And you're like, wait a minute, how come you're not touching on this? How come you're not touching on that? I got I, I halfway didn't want to do this because I knew I would leave out so many good scenes and great points. Um, this is just like my opinion and a basic overview of this film. Um, I want to touch on the end when he, when Michael takes power after his father has passed or died, um, he decides he's playing it cool. He's playing it cool, but he decides to eliminate everybody that ever did anything against his family, which I really liked. And, to grab and seize hold of power. Not only does he do that, but he decides to take over some territory as far as Vegas is concerned too. So, you know, he's got Vegas and New York. So, man, I, I don't know. I'm, I want to say I've seen all three movies, but it's been a while. And I can't remember which one, in my opinion, is the best one because I've, I've just watched this one after so many years. So... But I, w I wanted to touch on uh, some of the some of the assassinations that happened in the end. Uh, I feel like one of the assassinations happened. The guy was with his mistress, of course. One of his mistresses, of course. I think I feel like he got hit with Swedish K's. So that pretty much sums up what era it was. It had to have been like right around the Vietnam conflict type stuff. The well, Swedish K's were were. See, I'm not a firearms or a military historian so I'm not 100% on that but I feel like those guns were used during that time period and of course the the, um, the 1911 which is an American gun American as it gets um, also one mob boss was hit uh, when a guy in person at police officer I just like the way he was shooting that revolver I thought I'd bring it up oh and he he kind of Oh, I guess I should touch on that just before I end the video. So, his sister has, like, a real dirt bag for her husband. And, uh, like I said, it, it touches so much in real life. I've actually run across women like that who, you know, I mean, the person you're you're in, in love with is, like, the scum of the earth. I mean, this dude was a piece of work. I mean, he whipped her with a belt while she was pregnant. She still ran back to him and had more kids. Just, you shake your head at stuff like that. I mean, wow. But Michael winds up getting him an end too, which I was like, hey, if anybody in any movie ever deserved to, to get strangled, strangled, strangled like that, it was that guy. Um. Oh, I guess it, it'd be best to touch on his relationship with his with his wife. Now, like I said, she comes from a different world and she was real timid in the beginning and she still is. She's like, it's just, I think, look, I think this is another, another, uh, another look, another, another look at, um, something that happens in real life. For whatever reason, you, sometimes you can't explain how another person feels for, for, for another person, you know, but, of course, they come from different backgrounds. She's going to have a different opinion on the world than he is. He's going to decide to do things that she may find unwholesome. Um, I still haven't figured that out yet, like how that type of dynamic would work. Um, but I'm pretty sure it, it works. I'm just not, just not hip enough to understand it, I guess. I don't know. Now I'm just, now I'm just rambling for real. That's the end of the review.